Hello, welcome to Detection of Unusual Patterns in Equity Option Trading presentation. I introduce myself, Midi Tauban, Partnership Advisor at Ivado. I will be the moderator of this presentation. A few elements before starting. Time is very precious today because the presentation follow one another. So please be understanding when I tell you that there are two minutes left or that this is the time for the last question. Speaking of questions, please use the question tab in the chat which should appear to the right of your screen to share them. And I will be happy to report your question to the speakers at the end of the presentations, since there is no audio option. Now let me introduce you the speakers. So we have with me Chao Fan. She is a data analyst in the regulatory division of the Montreal Exchange since, since 2018. She works on market manipulation, detection techniques, and data visualizations. And with her, we have Manuel Morales, a professor of mathematics and statistics at the University of Montreal, working in the field of applied machine learning in banking and investments with experience in creating business value through machine learning and artificial intelligence. So I invite you, both of you, to join me and let you take over. Thank you. Thanks. Maybe uh, you can share your screen. Uh... Can you can you see my screen now? Oh, perfect. Yeah, it's working well. Okay. All right, guys. Uh, can I start talking? Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Xiao Fan, and I'm very happy to attend this event and take this chance to talk about our collaboration with Eva Do and some of our artificial intelligence projects. Today, Professor Mohales will do the presentation together with me. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so I will start uh, introducing the organization I worked for and some of our problems. Then Professor Mohales will talk uh, more about the details of the project. And at the end, I will do a little bit in, in conclusion, talking about our next steps in the project. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I worked for the regulatory division. The regulatory division is a self-regulatory organization and our mission is to ensure the integrity of the derivative markets. I worked for the team system data. Our team is responsible for all the regulatory data collected by the division and all the technological system used by the division and the different uh, initiatives, especially the artificial intelligence. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, why we are interested in artificial intelligence. Uh, as a regulator, an important part of our daily work is to monitor the market and uh, look into any suspicious activities which may be related to market manipulations. So our daily work relies a lot on the market savings tool, which is a tool help us to flag the anomalies in the market. Uh, currently, we're using a rule-based system which uh, work well in many scenarios, but it still has some problems. For example, uh, it generates a lot of false positive, which takes us a lot of time to analyze those false positive. And also for a rule-based system to work properly, we need to set up the parameters for different uh, products depending on their liquidity profile. And also uh, we need to adjust the parameters frequently so it adapts to the evolving market conditions. And that's why we're look looking for AI solutions because we believe AI models have more capacities and it may have some advantages and potentials compared to the traditional um, methodology. A second reason is after the system flags the anomalies, uh, we need to uh, investigate and analyze those alerts. So uh, we are interested in more advanced data analytics and visualization tools. A third reason is as a regulator, we see more and more financial institutes start using artificial intelligence and it become necessary for us to better understand this technology and the uh, different use cases and how it may impact the, uh, the market. Um, next slide, please. Um, this is our current uh, research team with Eva Do. 
we have the project managers, Mehdi and Heya from Ivado, and uh, professors and the students from different universities and from different domains, including quantitative finance, machine learning, natural language processing, and data visualizations. Uh, next slide. Uh, I, will, I will talk about our collaborative projects. So these are the projects we have uh, been working on in the past two, three years. And the first is simply a project uh, to do some statist statistical analysis on our data sets to better understand uh, uh, our, uh, our market participants, the trades and orders. The next two projects, anomic detection, option market, and insider trading detection, we start using artificial intelligence projects. And now I pass over to Professor Mohales to talk more details about these two projects. Hi, Hi thank you, Xiao. Uh, very happy to be here and to share um, this um, this project to share our work on, on, on this partnership. I would maybe come back here and linger a little bit uh, longer uh, on this slide because I want to emphasize the fact that um, this is a collaborative effort. It's a team effort. I'm the one uh, here uh, talking about about this, but I uh, want to just um, uh, emphasize the, the amazing work that Midi and Ray are, are doing here, uh, coordinating. And of course, then like Xiao mentioned, these are three universities, three professors with different expertise going from NLP, machine learning, and visualization um, that are working on their on their on their uh, this project um, and creating some interesting results for TMX. So I just wanted to linger out. A little bit longer than this. Um, so, yeah. So I wanted to talk about um, the project itself. So it's a, it's a uh, it's a large large project. It's clear it's clear like Shaw mentioned that there are new challenges today in electronic markets. Uh, now the market is different than it was ten or twenty years ago. Now is it now it is algorithms uh, placing the orders and that brings the activity at the level of the nanosecond. Uh, and, and and this creates new challenges, and 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 of course there are many things that can be done here. We're focusing at the beginning on two two use cases. Let's call them. The first one we call it deep unsupervised anomaly detection, which the idea here is um, to start exploring representations of this data because, uh, as I will uh, explain later, this data is multidimensional. It has many, many dimensions and many, and many levels of complexity. How we can represent this in ways uh, that uh, clustering and unsupervised uh, visualization of this can 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 function. Um, the other project is around insider trading. So this is how we can leverage other sources of data other than the market data. In this case, it's news and see if we can map that into the activity in the market and see if we can identify certain uh, uh, suspicious patterns. In this case, it would be insider trading, as I will, I will, I will talk about that uh, longer and later. Uh, and then, of course, all of these use cases, we're building a pipeline around them so such that at the end, all of these results um, and, and workflows that we're setting together, uh, setting together uh, can have a user interface, so a visualization that, like Xiao mentioned, could be useful for them to do that forensic analysis that is required from the regulatory, regulatory division that is going back in time and, and, and browsing through the history and see if, uh, one, we can flag activity that is suspicious, and second, do a comprehensive analysis uh, of, of that. So maybe that's where I will start. Uh, sharing with you this uh, mock-up of visualization where um, I, can, I, can, I can reflect on two things. One would be uh, the data itself. So it's, uh, when I say limit or the book, this is a snapshot of the liquidity available in, in, in the market, right? So uh, every nanosecond, this uh, picture changes. So in this picture, we, would, we could see the liquidity available in the market, people who want to sell, people who want to buy, at what price they're interested in buying or selling. And of course, this is going to evolve at the nanosecond uh, frequency because we will see uh, trades that are that are executed when there's a matching between offer uh, supply and demand. There are cancellations that arrive very often as well. And, and, and and other types of activities. So this is a very dynamic, um, multidimensional thing. 
Um, the idea here uh, would be how can we explore this data and flag activity that it's not normal. So that means we need to define what normal is. And this, of course, vary, varies with context. Uh, and once we have identified that normal behavior, then how we can uh, flag situations where uh, uh, this is changing. And, and we call those um, anomalies, right? Another interesting thing here to mention is that it's no, not, all, not only the different dimensions of this data, but as well the time dimension, right? Because a potentially uh, delinquent or suspicious activity is not one single event or order. It's a sequence of orders or events that arrive in a way that um, have other ob objectives than just providing liquidity, right? Could be manipulating the market or uh, taking advantage somehow of technology to um, profit from it. And a second point that I wanted to reflect on this is that uh, at the end of the pipeline that we're working on, the idea is to provide our partner with a visualization tool where they can do that forensic analysis. That is going back in time and looking at the different states of the of the limit order book at any given uh, time, looking also at the different measures and metrics that we're uh, building together um, to understand how the flags that we are uh, constructing uh, evolve over time and assist them with their forensic uh, work. Um, that's the overall picture. I will maybe spend a little more time uh, deep diving on the two use cases that I just mentioned. Um, uh, so the first one being unsupervised anomaly detection, so I can spend some time on going uh, through this. So we just focus on the second line here, because of course there, there was a lot of work put into the data processing. Um, that it's also very important uh, in the project. But I will focus on, on our first approach. So the idea here is how would we define normality uh, or normal behavior? So what the way we approach this at a first step, there are many things that we can do and, and we have a roadmap for this. But the first approach is uh, trying to look at the data and predict uh, simple things that we know are visible within the data, right? For instance, we notice that given a sequence of snapshots of the limit order book, then we can predict moneyness. I remember this is uh, option option, option data. So moneyness is whether the option is out of the money, in the money or out of the money. Uh, given a sequence of snapshots, then uh, it's relatively an easy task to predict the moneyness of the option. Same thing for implied volatility, volatility and, and and, and other metrics that we work on. So once we have that mapping between the picture and, and the prediction of certain things that are easy to identify, then uh, we can use that to flag activity because it turns out that if we use that model to predict simple things and we look at the error in our prediction and all of a sudden that error, uh, like in this picture here, it's the blue line, that error spikes and it's very high. In a, task that, in a task that is relatively simple, then that means that the underlying uh, assumptions or conditions uh, of the market are no longer there. And so there's something that it's not quiet uh, as it should be, and that's a flag. So that's a general pipeline. But then of course, the model that we use uh, to predict those tasks and the tasks that we define uh, can vary. So this is a very modular approach. Uh, in terms of models, we're trying different things. Like I mentioned, there's a sequential aspect to this. So we're using uh, sequential um, uh, uh, sequential learning to, to, to approach this. Um, and the interesting thing here, as Xiao will, will talk more about it later, is that we, so far, we have seen interesting results where this approach is good at, at capturing uh, uh, flags that the rule-based uh, models uh, have been capturing. So that's the first success. So that's the first thing that we've been working on and we're very happy with, with how this has been uh, unfolding. Um, there's so much yet to do, but uh, that's a good first step. Um, a second case, with, which is interesting, uh, is insider trading. So here the idea is uh, how could we detect uh, activity coming from an actor that knows something that he shouldn't know, that it's not public, and he is using that information uh, to benefit in the market. Information that it's not public again, and so he shouldn't have it, and he shouldn't be acting on it. How can how can we do that? 
So uh, our first approach here is um, uh, uh, using using alternative sources of data. So in this case, would be news, right? Because we know that information can come in many in many forms. So one would be news, but it could also be quarterly reports, uh, 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 disclosures. Um, and, and, and so on. And so we've been using uh, uh, data here, um, news, uh, and then mapping uh, the existence of those news events to activity in the book. And once we have that mapping between the activity in the limit of the book, and that should reflect how a market uh, reacts to the appearance of new data, once we have that mapping, then uh, we can, again, using the same pipeline, flag those activities. Here, what we're looking for is activity that we know happens when there, there's information out there, right? But if it turns out that in that time window, there's no information uh, publicly available, then that's a flag because the market, some agents are acting like they do when there's information. It's just that in this case, there's no information available. Right, so that's that's the approach here, and we've been um, doing some progress here because the first step is exactly creating the pipeline to uh, uh, extract those uh, news uh, feeds, clean them uh, using NLP to categorize them according to different um, uh, classes uh, relevant um, for the market and then uh, group them so that we can define uh, news events. So windows of time where events are present, events that have a relevance in the market. We have been doing that. We, we have um, good results in that respect. And now what we're currently working on is on mapping those activities, uh, th those news events to the activity in the market to understand how the market reacts to those news. So that later in a second, in a second step, we can uh, use those predictions to uh, flag events. Um, so that's that's where we are at. Uh, those are two very uh, interesting and successful uh, projects so far. Um, I will let Xiao comment a little bit more on uh, the impact and usefulness of what we've been working on uh, for the regulatory division of, of TMX. So thank you, and, and Xiao, I will let you comment on, on, on the results. Thank you. Uh, yeah, just uh, as the Professor Mohalas just mentioned, we uh, had uh, made some progress on the two projects. For example, the first one, uh, um, um, anomaly detection in the option market, we finish uh, putting uh, uh, put all the components uh, together and build up the pipeline, we are able to have to generate some preliminary results. And uh, we are able to ev evaluate the results by comparing uh, with our classical rule based system. And surprisingly, we find out the AI models have some potentials uh, and advantages compared to the classical methodology, it is capable to flag uh, some um, pattern which is now being flagged by the classical methodology. Uh, uh, the next slide, please. Uh, so the next step, uh, of course, we will try to train and evaluate uh, the AI models on much larger data sets so we could fully uh, prove the performance of the models. And also we will continue trying more advanced models uh, for example, the uh, anomaly detection on the option market, uh, one of our students is trying uh, LSTM model encoder because it's a time series data set and we believe uh, LSTM models may have better performance. And for the uh, insider trading detection, uh, we'll keep uh, improving the uh, financial news categorization. We're using much more advanced models. And uh, what's more, in this year, we'll try to bring the uh, models into our production environments so we could generate some uh, results on a more re regular basis so uh, we could uh, better evaluate performance and to prove that it has some advantage and added value to the team. 
Um, so uh, a lot of challenge, and but we are very excited to see what we will have uh, at the end of the project. With that saying, uh, it concludes our presentation today. Thank you very much. Uh, I know we go very quickly in the presentation. So uh, if you are interested and you, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact uh, Prof Professor Mohalas or myself. Uh, we're very happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chao and uh, Manuel, for this excellent presentation. It was quite interesting. So maybe uh, I will ask uh, the public to write your question to, uh, with the screen. So uh, maybe in the meantime, I can uh, I have maybe one or two questions to ask. Uh, no? I'm a little bit curious how your uh, colleagues, you know, the people who's doing manually those as, as, as investigations are perceive, perceiving the usage of AI. And are they like afraid of the models? Are they on board? Did you take time? Did you have to make an effort to convince them to go uh, toward those uh, research directions? Uh, no, we're not afraid of, we're not afraid of AI. Uh, in contrast, we are very excited to see uh, how AI models may help us to increase our efficiencies in our daily work. And, uh, and of course, we don't rely only on AI models. Uh, when the models flag something, there will always be some uh, menu work after that. Our analysts will uh, investigate the alerts and say, oh, if it's a uh, uh, a real alarm or a false positive. So, um, so yeah, we are no, we are not afraid of uh, the models. We, we, uh, and we believe the AI models uh, will help us and uh, and help us to build a more uh, a better uh, regulatory environment. And um, maybe a question for both of you guys in terms of. Uh... How, 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 in terms of technology transfer, how it happens between, uh, so I would be interesting maybe to have your point of view with Manuel. And after that, Chao, how did you perceive this process of generating a research model for publication to the, to the transfer to the, to the company like Demix? If I, if I may, I, I, can, I can comment on that. You could, you could uh, elaborate further on that, Chao, later. But, uh, Actually, I just realized that I was just too concentrated on the time, but there was a slide that I wanted to present exactly about that. The idea is that how we are approaching this, I think that's very interesting and, and innovative, where the goal is to build parallel systems where we mimic somehow the way the, 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 the TMX is gonna deploy this internally so that we can just test different models. And then when it's ready, it can just be pushed because it's already the same environment, it can just be pushed and then uh, to, a, to a center, a central hub from where they can easily just pull whatever they need. And it's right there uh, ready for uh, integration into their system. So that's something we're working on, which is a reflection of how we are looking at this problem, focusing on transfer, transfer knowledge uh, of this research. And yeah, it's always uh, a challenge how to transfer like a research project into a, a production environment. And I think this is uh, one of the focus of this year. And uh, as uh, Manuel just mentioned, our idea is we could build a similar uh, environment, but with less data and uh, no confidential information. And we uh, build a pipeline there. Uh, with a similar setup as the, as the production environment, and then we can easily uh, migrate after we have proven the models. So, uh, yeah, challenge and uh, still ongoing, so we'll see uh, how it goes. Perfect. We are uh, in the end of the session. Thank you again for your time on this presentation. I'll talk to you soon, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.